In this problem, we're going to use the method of variation of parameters to solve this differential equation. So let me go ahead and illustrate the steps over here on the side as we work through this. So the first step in the method of variation of parameters is to find y sub c, which is equal to c sub 1 y1 plus c sub 2 y2. The second step in the method of variation of parameters is to compute the w's. So w is going to be the Ronskian of the y's. So that means you have y1, y2 in the first row and the derivatives in the second row. Then you have to find w1 and w. So for w1, the trick is you replace the first column of your w with 0 and f of x and you keep the second column. You might say, what in the world is f of x? Well, f of x is whatever is here, assuming that the coefficient here is a 1, which it is. If it wasn't, we would have to divide by that number. So like if there was a 3 in front of the y double prime, we would have to get rid of it. Okay, We'd have to divide everything by 3. And then w2 is very similar, except you keep the first column of your Ronskian, and you replace the second column with 0 and f of x. These steps are pretty easy, and most people have uh, no issues at all getting through this. Once you do it once, you got this. The hard step is the next step. It's the u's. u1 is the integral of w1 over w. And then u2 is the integral of w2 over w. This is what separates the easy problems from the hard problems. Sometimes the integration can be difficult, and sometimes it's not so difficult. The last step is to find, or an almost the last step, uh, the particular solution will be u1y1 plus u2y2. And finally, the very last step is the final answer, which is y equals yc plus yp. So these are the steps uh, for variation of parameters. I wasn't going to go through them in this pr problem. I was just going to do the problem, but it's too late. I've already done it. All right, so let's go ahead and work through this. So the first step is to find yc, so a solution. So to do that, we'll pretend it's equal to 0, and we'll write down the characteristic equation. So remember, for the characteristic equation, the derivative, the order of the derivative has to match your exponent. So it's m squared plus, and then this is y, so you just put a 1 there. If it's like 2y, you put a 2, etc. And this is equal to 0, always. Subtract 1 from both sides. That puts us here. And now we can take the square root of both sides. And so we get m equals plus or minus i. So we have complex conjugates. Recall that when you have complex conjugates, you want to think of it as 0 plus or minus 1 times i. And this matches the form alpha plus or minus beta times i. So your alpha is 0, and your beta is 1. So the solution for y sub c, recall, has the form c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. Figured I'd refresh your memory on all of the formulas as we go through this. Even then, though, I'm sure there's some parts. If, you ha if you've never seen this, this must be like, oh, my God, <laughs> what's going on? Um, so alpha is 0. There's a lot here. So alpha is 0. So e to the 0 is 1. So this is c1 cosine x <laughs> plus c2 sine x. So this is y sub c. So that's, that's the first step. We have done it. Success. One down. <laughs> okay. Um, what's your y1? What's your y2? Well, I guess y1 is cosine. You might be wondering, what if you put the sine first? It, it actually won't matter. Uh, you'll get the correct answer at the end anyways. Okay, let's work out our w's. Let me switch colors here. Let's go to, ooh, how about, how about blue? So w is the Ronskian of the y's. So we have cosine x, sine x. And in the second row, we take the derivative, right? The formula says, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine. 
All right, good stuff. Then you multiply this times this. That gives you cosine squared minus this times this. But there's already a minus, so it's going to become a plus. So sine squared. So you just get 1. So w is equal to 1. I'm going to put that in a box. It's always good to like box in stuff when you find it. It just helps you keep track of what's going on. If you're taking an actual class on differential equations, it helps whoever's grading your work uh, tremendously. Trust me, I, I grade stuff and like I look for the boxes. Just put it all in boxes. <laughs> w1. Okay, so for W1, the trick is you replace the first column because it's W1. And you replace it with 0 and f of x. So it'll be 0 cosecant x. Then you keep the second column, so sine x cosine x. Beautiful stuff. This is equal to, let's see, this times this is going to be 0, minus this times this, so sine times cosecant, which is lovely, right, because that's negative sine times 1 over sine, which is absolutely wonderful because that's negative 1. So w is negative 1. Couldn't ask for a better w. w2 same thing, except now we keep the first column. So cosine x, negative sine x. And we replace the second column with 0 f of x, so 0 cosecant x. This will be equal to cosine x, cosecant x, this times this, minus 0. Let's scroll down here. So this is w2. So this is equal to cosine x. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So we just get cosine x over sine x, which is just cotangent x. So w2 is cotangent x. I'm going to write it over here. w2 is cotangent x. And I'm going to put it in a box. So we've accomplished the second step. We have found all of the w's. So let's recap what we've done. So, so far, so good, right? We've got quite a few checks. So we've, we're making some progress. And it seems like a lot of steps, but I really want to emphasize that, that once you do one of these on your own, you're not going to forget the steps. No one ever forgets the steps, typically. The sticking point is right here. This is where people mess up. Step three. And if you ever get stuck on a step like this, just keep going anyways. You know, um, Just do whatever it takes to keep going. You know, Rename it. Call it I. Say, I don't know what it is, but I'm calling it I. And then just give a ridiculous answer. That way, you know, it shows effort. You know, it shows that you didn't give up just because... You couldn't do the integral because it will happen. Maybe you might get stuck on these bad boys. Let's do it. Here's the moment of truth. So you won. Let's see how hard they are. So w1 over w dx. Let's see what that's about. Let's see how hard this can be. So w1, I can't see it. Oh, I forgot. I didn't call it w1. There it is. My bad. So w1 is right there. So that's going to be uh, negative 1 over 1 dx. Well, this is not hard. <laughs> That's just going to be negative x. So u1 is equal to negative x. Good stuff. So now let's find u2. So u2 is equal to w2 over w dx. So w is 1. w2 is cotangent. So this is just cotangent of x dx. So I have this... Um, integral memorized, kind of. I paused there because I was thinking about how to do it. Because if I think about how to do it, I can do it in like a second. How? Let me show you. Once you know how to do this, you can do it in your head. So cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay. And then so if you were to do this, which we will, you would let u be equal to sine. And then du would simply be cosine x dx. So this entire top piece is your du. So u2 is equal to du over u, which is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of sine. So u2 is the natural log of the absolute value of the sine function. And I mentioned I can do it in my head, and here's how. You look at the integral, you say, okay, cotangent. Okay, cotangent is cosine over sine, so u is going to be your sine, so it's on the bottom. So you're just going to get du over u. We know that's an ln, and the sine's on the bottom, so it's just going to be the ln of sine. Boom, done. Same thing with tangent, right? Tangent sine over cosine, except in that case, the derivative of cosine is negative. So you, you would get 
negative ln cosine when you integrate tan. But the thought process is the same. It's better to know how to do it because that way you can quickly think about it in your head. So not only are you memorizing it, but you're memorizing how to do it, which is even better, right? Because you'll never forget it. Okay, so we've done the u's. Now we just have to form yp. So yp is equal to u1 y1 plus u2 y2. So u1 is negative x. Y1 is right here. It's cosine x. It's a nice problem. This wasn't too hard. So, uh, And then U2 is this here, the ln absolute value of sine x. So ln absolute value of sine x. And then Y2 is just sine x. Okay? So the final answer is YC plus YP. So let's write it. So Y equals, that's that. now we're done with that one. Now we're in step five. YC plus YP. So I'm going to put a comma and write it again. So y equals c1 cosine x. That's your yc. It's from up here. Okay, plus c2 sine x. Minus x cosine x. Plus sine x. And then times, times ln absolute value of sine x. And that should be the final answer to this problem. So really nice problem in my view because the integrals aren't hard and this one's pretty easy. I mean you can have this one memorized or you know you can work it out whatever so it's not too bad. Uh, really nice problem. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there in the world who is trying to learn some differential equations. Good luck.